And when I was requested to speak, I thought that I would want to talk about being a writer at home because I have in some kind of ways been acclaimed as a writer at home. Uh, but before I talk about my own being a writer at home, I want to join the conference in honoring Rex Nettleford, the organic Caribbean intellectual and artist who has recently departed for a show upon which we will one day find ourselves. What I like about Rex is the affirmative and self-confident manner in which he conducted himself on behalf of the people of this region. What impressed me, now that I know a little more about him, is that his humble rural beginnings were not something <laughs> were not something to shrink from, but were utilized by him as a badge of prideful honor. And that against all utterances to the contrary, he was prepared to affirm the value of the black experience to turn our experience of catastrophe into a responsibility to struggle in the face of an ongoing brutality, injustice, and carelessness for the humanizing of the people of our region. And to point us to our creative output in music, dance, literature, festival arts, as the ground from which to construct what I now want to call an aesthetic of possibility. This is a term that I struck, hit upon, and I think is something that I would want to develop, you know, as we go on. I did not know Rex all that well. I mean, <clears throat> I knew him like I suppose most people know, you know, someone of that uh, standing. Uh, I saw him dance the Kumina with the Jamaica Dance Company at Carifester. I suppose it was 1995 or some time, some time ago, when he was no, I think that that might have been his last, or around his last performance as, you know, a practice as a professional dancer. Um, I saw him dance there at Queen's Hall in Border Spain. I have seen and heard him at various functions uh, that exposed us to his oratory, you know, <clears throat> his self-belief, his concerns. I know that he did work with the Rastafarians and that he pioneered with the University of the West Indies the development and expansion of its adult education program. But even without this knowledge, I found him to be someone who represented you we well. Indeed, more than anyone else that I know, Rex represented the soul of you we, its anchor in the region, and among its, among the people, its credibility. Of the Caribbean and third world post-colonial intellectual is to redress the perceived and accepted notion that by definition, nothing creative could come out of the colonies. If I have any problem with this statement, it is that it is a defensive one. That we have been placed, of course, on the defensive even before we have begun. Of course, we know it is responding to Naipaul, the charge that the West Indies has been more about mimicry and that nothing has been created here. And while we contest vehemently Naipaul's idea, we are ourselves reluctant to say what it is we have created. Uh, we seem shy to claim carnival, reggae, uh, these humanizing institutions as the things that we have created. They seem not uh, to carry with them enough prestige 
and hence the, the, the flow rate uh, at which they are uh, validated. Um, how, we, how well have we validated the carbon, what we would like to see advanced in our society? We are the ones who have struggled to maintain ourselves against the forces positioned by the status quo, the gatekeepers. And I suppose I mean by the gatekeepers, the validating institutions. It is these gatekeepers of whom Eric Williams wrote in Capitalism and Slavery. And it was interesting to find Williams writing about it. The ideas built on these, and he's colonial, he's talking about colonial interests, continue long after the interests have been destroyed and work their old mischief mischievousness, which is all the more mischievous because the interest to which they correspond no longer exists. I think it is the same. I'm thinking that right, you find that there are gatekeepers who keeping who are protecting interests that you don't quite understand what they protect. You don't quite understand why it is that you're not validating what you've produced. What are these ideas that you have developed that you're protecting? And I think that this has been a tremendous problem for us, basically. I think that it is perhaps the same interest Walcott seems to addressing in the schooner flat. When he says, if loving these islands must be my load, out of corruption, my soul takes wings. But they had started to poison my soul with their big house, big car, big time bubble, coolie nigger Syrian, French Creole. So I leave it for them and their carnival. I take in a sea bat. I go down the road. <laughs> and in a kind of way that, you know, sometimes we feel uh, that we too must take a sea bath and go down the room and leave them in a kind of way. I, of course, have had my uh, tenure here. I have been here, which is kind of like what I wanted to talk about at one stage of being here. And um, being here has not been all that wonderful. I mean, it has both been both wonderful and not all that wonderful. And it's very difficult in a way to talk about it, you know. Uh, and I know that it began with a certain kind of enthusiasm. Even uh, my fellow writers found it necessary, who found it necessary to go away and live and write from abroad, were happy that the region was able to accommodate at least one or two of us. Mm -hmm. And I don't know whether the region itself, I mean, in terms of its institutions, have understood this well, you know, because I think that people have been accommodated and valued and allowed to live, if you want, in uh, many places. And in Trinidad, and I suppose in the Caribbean, it's, it's not very good. I think it's not very nice. I think that we could do better.